So hi everybody, Shelly here. I'm doing a critique today for Mario R. He was super kind to send in his master copy of Caravaggio. Um, the cool thing about Mario, hi Mario. He only started drawing as of March, 2019. Uh, his first painting was done in the summer of 2020 and this master copy that is a exact original size of Caravaggio is 46 by 58. This is only his fifth painting in his lifetime. So gosh, Mario, kudos to you. That is such a huge, brave undertaking on your part. And I'm so excited to be able to be with you on your journey to learning painting and mastering this uh, beautiful medium of oil paint. Uh, I am super honored to be able to critique your work and I really do appreciate you giving me this opportunity. So without further ado, let's do it. Here is the painting that we're going to be critiquing today. So Mario did a master copy or it could even be considered a master study of Caravaggio's painting, The Incredulity of St. Thomas. So here is the Caravaggio version. It's a very large painting. And Mario was very <laughs> courageous to do his copy at the same size, 46 by 58. Here's a look at Mario R with his painting. Um, so you can see it is quite a large uh, endeavor. So the first thing I want to do is pull this painting up in Photoshop in a black and white version. I really think it's important to investigate whether or not your values are coming close to the original. So let's take a look at the two together. Caravaggio's original painting on the left and Mario's painting on the right. Now I've just turned this into a black and white version of each. And so let's uh, dive in here. Okay, so here is the value study. Mario has, the lights are pretty good. I feel like that the lights are as light as they should be. And once he comes in and darkens some of these areas that need a little bit darker value, that'll make the light areas even a little bit more light. So I can see there's a nice area of contrast right here in Caravaggio's version and um, just want to see a little bit more thickness of that dark contrasting line between the skin and the fabric there. I think that would be helpful. Can you see there's a bit more contrast in this hand? So this area here leading into this index finger needs to be darker. And this area of contrast here isn't quite wide enough. And it looks like there's a nice dark triangle here that you could work up a little bit better as well. Now the inside folds here could have some increased darkness. And then as I'm just kind of working my way from the left across to the right. And I like to see this value shape here get a little bit darker. So can you see how in Caravaggio, this area is darker? And this area is darker, but also look how the shape comes down towards the chest like that. And you've got it coming right up into his nose good there. And then it's pretty much the same value till it reaches this guy's head. And this dark area here comes up a little bit and then down. So just darken that area up a little bit, but pull this darkness over into this area here. And that will help improve that shape. Drawing of this figure's head on the left is a little bit off. What I'd like to see you do is redraw this lower part of the face. It looks like you need to open up this area right here a little bit and show some more um, of his chin. And then this 
part of the face has that little light highlight, which you have, it's good, it looks right. But the rest of his face is too light. So you wanna, so you wanna increase the value there. And this hair on this figure needs to be darker. You've got this highlight here is a little bit wide. You shrink that down a little bit. And this area needs to be darker as well. Like this line here is a little sharp. It may need to be a bit more like that. One of the things that you've done really well here, Mario, is your hands are drawn exquisitely. And even the values, the way that you've shaded them is really nice. I just like to see more contrast between the light and the dark areas so it matches better with the Caravaggio. Check the space here. It looks like that this could be open a little bit more and then increase the darkness underneath here and between the fingers a little bit. And I think that'll bring you closer to the Caravaggio. And then this area needs to be much darker. You can see that comparatively. And then it comes down and underneath. So check this area here in your painting and increase the shadow value there. This fold in the fabric is a little too narrow, so just look at that area compared to the Caravaggio and um, repaint that, and just widen up your shadow, and that should get you there. Check the value here, and a little bit darker here, and here where it runs off the image. This area is very dark in the Caravaggio and you can't see as much detail. There's very little detail. Um, yours has a little bit more detail, but maybe once you darken it, you can get rid of a little bit of it. You wanna have some mystery in that area. Caravaggio was really good at um, creating mystery in his paintings and that's creating areas where you you're not sure what's happening in that shadow. This area here needs to be quite a bit darker. Even the flesh of that really well-drawn hand could be darker, as could this part of the sleeve. So the light's hitting here, and then this area is in shadow, because this this arm, this part of the arm is blocking the light from hitting here. Again, look at all the mystery. You can't see any of the details in Caravaggio's painting there. And it comes right up in through here. A lot of dark mystery. And this shadow shape, I think, is a little shorter on your figure. So you want to Darken that and just increase the shape a little bit. And bring this shadow up. Look how high it comes up, almost to his eye. So yours is a little bit short. Look at the shadow shape of this figure's eye. I think yours might need to be a little bit bigger. So you've got this highlight in the right spot, in the right size, that looks good but the value surrounding it is too light. And look at this really dark crevice between the nostril and the nose. Need to put that in. Darken underneath the nose because this is away from the light in the shadow. This area could be darker. And this area here that goes into his hair and then this guy's hair is a little off. Check your drawing. That little shadow comes forward. It's like you might need a little tiny bit more height right here on that hairline. Look at the highlight on Caravaggio's ear. It kind of goes more like that where yours is coming down right there. So it's a really great idea to start your master copy slash master study with an underpainting. 
Caravaggio did under paintings. He often used line drawing with paint, sometimes with charcoal, and then would go in with his lighter colors and then um, work that way. But pulling up your reference image in a black and white and then working your underpainting from the black and white photo will help immensely. This way you can work out all the value problems and all the drawing problems in the beginning, especially on such a large painting. Uh, it will be very helpful to you. So if you're seeing this critique today and you'd like one of your paintings critiqued, you can contact me via email. My email address is in the description and you can send me your painting and I will set up a critique much like you see here that I've done with Mario. Just keep in mind his is a master copy, yours may not be, so the critique might be structured just a little bit differently, but you will gain a lot of value and hopefully elevate and take your skill level up a notch by receiving a critique. You can find out more about my critique and the critique bundles that I offer by going to sjcportraitcourse.com. Here's a really cool thing to try. So I am going to drag this original uh, Caravaggio image on top of Mario's black and white image. Let's put the color image on top of the black and white image. And then we're going to take the opacity down so we can see how his drawings working out. So I'm going to really focus on kind of lining it up with that main figure right here, this head here. So you can see how exactly your uh, drawing Mario is lining up with Caravaggio's by putting this directly on top. So with this head being our kind of steering of the ship, let's say, I can see how this space right here, you've got your head over a little bit far to the left, and this figure's head is a little further, it's a little too close to this guy and this guy. So this head needs to be kind of brought up towards the top, and this shoulder is gonna need to be adjusted if you're trying to get it exactly positioned. Uh, your hands are pretty darn close, um, this hand, look how good it lines up. I can see Caravaggio's finger here kind of coming in. Let me just see something, a little more opacity. Yeah, see Caravaggio's fingers here. They're coming over to the right a little bit more. Yeah, so this hand's a little bit higher up than it should be. So the drawing has some adjustment um, adjustments that could happen. This figure, your, your nose looks a little close. Um, I can see Caravaggio's is down here and yours is up here. So this head, so there's Caravaggio's nose, his eyes over here, this ears over here. So your head's a little too close to the central figure head. So your heads are just a little bit off in the layout if we're using this as our steering mechanism. So this guy is in the correct spot, pretty close. And then we can see a few adjustments. Uh, if I move Caravaggio's ear, lining up his ear with your ear, then I can see that your face is a little too narrow. So see how it, your nose, the profile, would need to come out to the left a little bit. Do you see that there? And by moving his head to the left a little bit, then these guys tend to fall in line a little bit better, these two. This head is still a little off. You can see the ear here it would need to go up. So there's a little bit of uh, a drawing issue there, but overall, pretty darn close, Mario. Pretty darn close. So another cool thing to do is take your full color reference image, 
of your master copy. This even works if you're using a reference image of your own that you took and are painting from. Change it to a black and white. And I can take that even a step further by moving into the posterize image with four levels. So this is gonna give us our highlight and our light value, our mid value, and our dark value. So this is a four color noten. So it's only showing you the painting with very simplified values. This lightest value is your highlight. Then you have your light value, your mid value, and your dark value. So there's only four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> and this will give you a very good indication as to how to structure your composition and show the lighter areas versus the darker areas. And in this Caravaggio painting, there is a lot of shadow. It is more shadow than light. And then when you're ready for the color, your only job at that point is to focus on the color. So let's pull up those color versions. Okay, here's the full color Caravaggio on the left and we have still Mario on the right and his full color version. Now Mario, I know it's difficult to photograph paintings and your painting may be a little bit darker in real life, but I'm just gonna make my comments based on what I see here and then you can adjust um, the comment to suit if uh, maybe the lighting's not quite right on your photograph. Another thing to note is I went to the Art Renewal Center Museum and I pulled up this Caravaggio there. This way I know, because it's the Art Renewal Center and it's museum quality, that what I'm seeing on my computer screen is going to be pretty darn close to true color. It's going to look very close to what you would see as if you were in a museum and viewing the original painting. So. I'm not sure, Mario, what uh, reference you used. Maybe that threw your colors off a little bit. But um, so the, the Art Renewal Center site will uh, allow you to view their museum works for free. But if you want to join, it's just a, it's a very lim uh, small amount of money, I think, to join for the year. You can actually download these images and then have them to work from. I always get my uh, master copy images from the Art Renewal Center Museum or another museum type site so I know that my colors are going to be correct. The other thing I like about the Art Renewal Museum site is when you're in there and you have the image pulled up you can really zoom in pretty close and it's still a very high quality uh, resolution so you can get close up to the details. So let's just review really quick. So what was working for me that you did really well was um, the drawing. The drawing is really close. You've got a really good handle and a good start on that. Just that uh, figure on the left, his head needs to be a little bit more uh, worked. I think you can pull it out and make it better when you add a little bit of that lower chin in there. And then you've portrayed the fabric very well. It's very realistic. I love how um, you have the folds and the, the way that you've transitioned from the lights to the darks and the fabrics is very well done. Uh, and of course the hands. I'm very impressed at <laughs> how you have painted the hands. They look really nice. Your transitions are pretty darn good. What I'm seeing as far as the color, I'm just going to jump into the hands. Look at Caravaggio. He's got that contrast. So we, if you had painted the underpainting with the correct value, it would have steered you in, the, in a better direction as far as when you laid down these colors. When you come in and put this shadow color in here, like it is on Caravaggio's, that's going to really give your hands a nice depth and volume. This thumb area, you've got it pretty neutral. This needs to have more heat. Put some more red in there and also right into here as well. And that's happening because it's moving closer into the shadow. It's not in full shadow yet. So just before you step into full shadow areas, if it's flesh, it's usually a very hot or warm um, flesh tone, a dark 
hot flesh tone. So that's what I'm seeing here in the Caravaggio and yours is missing it. The flesh tones in this hand and this hand, yours is very yellow here and this one is really neutral. I think you need to ask yourself when you're painting, is when I'm laying down the correct color? If not, then you need to ask yourself these three color questions. Is it too yellow? Is it too blue? Or is it too red? And if I was painting this and I was asking myself that question, I would be saying, okay, this is too yellow. Not only is it too light in value, but we're going to pretend we have our values correct. So <laughs> this is too yellow. I need to add some heat to it and make it redder. So that's what I would do. And same with this hand here. You just really need to increase the um, deep red in the shadow areas. Your highlights are probably okay. They could be a little more yellow. I've seen that in the Caravaggio. The highlights are kind of a cool yellow color compared to those really warm flesh tones. Like on the top, it's nice and warm. Then you've got those yellow highlights a little bit on that pinky. And then the knuckles are warm then your highlights again and then into the shadow. So these fingernails are too light. Darken those up. Just this hand over here is in full shadow. So look how dark that Caravaggio's is painted. Your hand looks like it's getting light, but there shouldn't be any light hitting it. So we want to go into that with a shadow color of a darker kind of a uh, mauve or a wine color flesh for that. The other thing I'm seeing in this figure's robe, the color is a little washed out. You need to punch up the saturation and especially along the shoulder. You can see how saturated these areas are in the Caravaggio. And the most saturated areas in your painting are going to occur just where the light is ending and the shadow is beginning. It, there's like a transition line of saturated color that happens just before you step into the shadow. This figure's robe, the color's a little bit off. It's a little bit too cool. Just add some warmth there. And this highlight is too light in value. What Caravaggio did on this highlight is he used saturated color to show that highlight. And that's, um, I talk about that in one of my videos where you can actually use color temperature to show volume instead of using value. And in this case, that's what he's done. So the value is pretty close on Caravaggio. And then you can see that he's painted that highlight with that saturated color. Your highlight's too light and not saturated enough. Like these shadow areas here, just check the shape of your figure. This needs to come up and look how dark his shadow is. Like you've got too much information showing here. Like this needs to be really darkened up and put some mystery back into there. We've got all that mystery. There's very little information that should be seen there. And you want to darken up these shadow shapes and just a little bit of highlight there and then it drops all the way out into the darkness through here like just completely moves into the background again the value here his hair is too light and there's too much information showing the warmth of this forehead this um, is too cool so I'd ask myself, is it too red, too yellow, or too blue? And in your case, I would say it's too blue and I would want to add some red and perhaps I would want to add some yellow as well. So when you're looking at the Caravaggio, you see that highlight area is pretty cool yellow. And it's cool because when you put it next to these warmer colors, it makes it look cool. But the whole forehead, needs to have a lot more warmth to it. 
and look how dark this uh, forehead area is. Even though you can see the creases in his forehead, that whole area needs to be darker. So, and as you roll this head towards the shadow, just soften it as you pull in some of the background color into that um, forehead area and then start to transition with little steps of color walking toward the light. So as you darken up this so as you darken up this figure's hair, I think this darker shape will change and become more accurate and darken the top of this figure in the front's hair. And all of this should take a better shape. And I believe the flesh here is too pink. <laughs> this gentleman is not well. <laughs> so Caravaggio has painted his flesh to look a little peaked, especially in this light area. So just, um, I would increase the yellow in this area here. And this whole shape here needs to be, you know, look at the color. I think it needs to be a little bit more neutral and then it gets more yellow as it starts to turn towards the shadow. This arm in the background here is too light. It's coming forward too much. So darken that up and that'll also help give you contrast on your front figure's face. And look at the beautiful red in this figure's nose on Caravaggio. And you're missing that. And it's a glorious thing to paint the redness right there in the nose. The noses are often uh, very red. There's, it's more vascular, as you know, <laughs> and the blood is closer to the surface, so it's going to be portrayed in real life as, a, as an area that has more redness. So you take all the liberty you want to punch up the red in a nose. Ears, too. Like, I see that redness happening on the tip of this nose and this cheek here as well. And even this figure has a bit of rosy glow. And look at that bright orangey red highlight on the ear there of that far left figure. But I, see, I, I always pull up my reference after I've got my painting pretty far along, just like I've done here for you, Mario, I put mine side by side and oh my gosh, you can instantly <laughs> see where you've gone wrong, but you can also see what you've done well. So it's a great way to, um, kind of critique or edit your own painting. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions regarding the remarks that I've made, uh, just let me know. You can email me. And uh, that is your critique. I think that uh, you're off to a really great start. I'm super excited to see uh, where you take this. Mm -hmm.